You will no doubt have seen, even if you have not studied, Civil Defence Handbook Number 10, entitled Advising the Householder on Protection Against Nuclear Attack. In order to illustrate the contents of this handbook more graphically, the Civil Defence Authorities have produced seven short films based on the seven sections that form the contents of the handbook. If the government decide that the time has come for this advice to be acted upon, these films will be shown to the public on all television networks. Their present purpose, however, is for your information. So we shall now show the seven films as one film. Here we go. The government has decided that in the present state of international tension, you should be told how best to protect yourselves from the dangerous effects of nuclear attack. If this tension should lead to war, it is essential that you shall have taken every possible precaution to safeguard your family, yourself, and your home. This film will show what are the dangers to expect and the best means of protection. First, the basic facts. When a nuclear weapon explodes, it produces three main hazards. The first of these comes from the heat generated by the fireball. This may last as long as 20 seconds. The heat is so great that for some miles around the explosion, it could kill people who are caught in the open, and it could burn exposed skin over a much wider area. The heat also threatens your home. By striking through unprotected windows, it would start fires across the whole area. The second danger is from blast. For some miles, buildings will be destroyed or severely damaged. Further out, buildings will suffer less severe damage as the blast effect diminishes. And for many miles beyond that, there will be light damage such as broken windows. The third danger is from fallout. If the bomb explodes on or near the ground, dust is sucked up by the explosion and is made radioactive in the rising fireball. It rises high in the air and is then carried downwind, falling slowly to earth over an area which may be hundreds of miles long and tens of miles wide. Within this area, everything in the open would become covered with a film of radioactive dust. This fallout dust gives off radiation, rather like x-rays. Radiation cannot be seen, felt, heard, or smelt, but exposure to radiation can cause sickness and death. The radiation is at its greatest intensity during the first two days, but the danger decreases rapidly as time passes. After two days, it is 100 times less harmful than at first, but even then it is still dangerous. These then are the dangers that may face all of us. Heat, blast, and fallout. In the other sections of this film, you will be shown what precautions will help to protect you from these dangers. Obtain protection against fallout, and as far as possible against heat and blast, you should now select and fortify a room in which to shelter, both during the attack and during the period of intense radiation that may follow. The penetration of harmful radiation is cut down by heavy and dense materials such as brick, concrete, and earth. The more, therefore, of these materials you can put between yourself and the fallout, the greater the protection you will obtain. The fallout will not get inside a house that has its windows and doors shut and has not been damaged by the blast. But it will settle on the roof and around the house. It is the radiation from this external fallout that endangers anyone inside. Now the choice of a fallout room. 
A basement or a cellar will give you the best protection and is the most suitable as a fallout room. Many houses will not have a basement or a cellar, but you can still find a room in your house which will give you protection from fallout. Remember that the more material there is between yourself and the fallout, and the further you are from the outside walls and the roof, the better the protection you will obtain. You can see why this ground floor room gives the best protection against fallout. It has only one outside wall, with the other walls either connecting inside the house or with the house next door. The room is also shielded by the houses across the street, which give it extra protection. The radiation from fallout can come from an appreciable distance, so this makes the front room more suitable than the back room, which overlooks a wide area and is far more exposed. If you live in a modern concrete block of flats of five or more floors, unless there is a basement, the best protection is given by the middle floors. If your home is in the upper or lower parts of the building, it would be best if you made arrangements to join the families living in the middle floors. In no circumstances should the top stories be used. In a block of flats with four stories or less, or one which has wooden floor joists, the best protection will be on the ground floor. A room should be selected in the same way as for a house, with not more than one outside wall, and with the most protection from neighboring buildings. Prefabricated houses or bungalows give little protection from radiation. If you live in one, you should try and join friends or neighbors whose houses give better protection from fallout. If this should not be possible, there are other steps you can take which will be described later. Wherever you live, when you have chosen your fallout room, it should then be modified to improve the protection it can give you. The windows will be the weak point and will have to be blocked in with some heavy material. Using sacks or sandbags, which should be about two-thirds filled, you can block the windows from the outside. Here, they are piled on strong tables until the whole window is blocked. Alternatively, you can fill boxes or other containers with tightly packed earth. If you can't block up the windows from the outside, pieces of heavy furniture should be positioned in front of the window and then packed with earth or books. A second method you could use is to remove the window altogether. Fill the gap both on the inside and the outside with planks or boards. These rest on the windowsill and should be bolted or wired together. As you build them up, you should fill the space between the boards with tightly packed earth. Thirdly, after removing the window frame, you could fill the space with bricks. A double layer is possible. Both these methods are as effective as sandbagging and may be the most suitable for your house. You can make the fallout room more effective by blocking the outside door and any windows in the passage leading to your room, by treating adjoining rooms in the same way, and finally, by thickening the outside walls. By constructing a core or heavily protected shelter, you can greatly improve your protection for the first few hours when radiation is at its greatest intensity. This is especially important for those of you living in a bungalow with no alternative shelter. There are several simple kinds of shelter core you could make. Here, two doors are leaned against the wall, leaving a space in which the householder and his family can sit, and then bags of earth are placed over the top. Here, the floorboards are taken up and a trench is dug under the floor. Ensure that it is in the corner furthest from the outside wall. You could also use a cupboard under the stairs with sandbags outside the door and on the stairs. For some of you, it will not be practicable to build a shelter indoors, but a trench dug outside your home would give good protection. It should be deep enough to stand in and the sides should be shored up. The trench should be covered with planks or other available material strong enough to support at least two feet of earth. Don't forget to leave an entrance with a movable cover. In 
one or other of the ways you have just seen, you should now take steps to protect yourselves against the hazards of a nuclear attack. After an attack, it may be necessary for you, your family, and any others who have taken refuge with you to live in your fallout room for at least a week. It may not be safe for you to go outside to obtain any more food and water. So you will have to be prepared to live on the supplies you collected before the attack. You will now be shown what general provisions you should make. First of all, your furniture. Your shelter is going to be your living room, your bedroom, your washroom, your kitchen and your storeroom. It must have the basic furniture to fulfill all these requirements, but at the same time, floor space should be saved wherever possible. Use shelf space to its best advantage. Your room will need seating, bedding, a portable radio and spare batteries so that you can receive advice and further instructions, amusements and pastimes for you and the children, simple cooking equipment and fuel, and a large store cupboard for food supplies. You will need to have by you a reserve of tinned and other non-perishable food. This should be enough to feed the whole household and possibly some extra mouths for at least a fortnight. Wrap up all your food, except for tin stuffs, and keep it in closed cabinets or cupboards. Food is not harmed by fallout radiation, but anything that has had fallout dust on it will be contaminated and made dangerous to eat. If there are babies or young children, remember their special food and don't forget the pets. It may not be possible to keep all your food in the fallout room, but you should keep as much food there as possible. Any remaining food should be kept in your larder or in a cupboard close to your fallout room. Once there has been a warning of fallout, it may be dangerous to leave your fallout room except for very short periods to collect more food and water. After a nuclear attack, the mains water supply may fail or become contaminated by fallout. Store as much water as you can. For drinking, you will need a minimum of two pints per person per day. Three days ration of drinking water should be kept in sealed flasks, bottles or jars inside the fallout room itself. Do not waste the water, it may have to last you a fortnight. Fill the bar, the hot and the cold tanks and every available container. Keep reserves away from the light and covered. Water stays fresher in the dark and if fallout dust gets into the water it will be contaminated. Find the whereabouts of your main stopcock and be ready, if there is a warning of attack, to turn off the supply. After an attack, you may not be able to use your lavatory because of insufficient water for flushing. Therefore, you must make alternative arrangements for sanitation, either in your fallout room or just outside the door. You will also need to provide a dustbin, as there will be no way of disposing of your refuse. Finally, First aid. A simple but well-stocked first aid box. You must be able to help people who are injured or taken ill. It is essential that your fallout room is properly equipped for sleeping, eating, drinking, storage, cooking, refuse, sanitation and emergency first aid. Remember you may have to live in the room for at least a week. Your survival may well depend on the care and foresight with which you have supplied your room. When you have completed the preparation and equipping of your fallout room, you should next take precautions to safeguard the rest of your house. You should be prepared to deal with the worst effects of heat and blast, in particular, the menace of fire. Fire is the most immediate danger after a nuclear attack. Though the heat will not set light to the bricks or plaster of your house, it will strike through unprotected windows and set any inflammable material on fire. 
whitewash the windows, especially those at the top of the building. This will greatly reduce the fire risk by reflecting away much of the heat, and the heat should have passed by the time the slower moving blast wave arrives. There are other things you can do to reduce the fire risk. You should remove all inflammable material from upper floors, which are the most exposed to the heat wave. Clear away all newspapers, magazines, and wooden furniture, so as to leave as little as possible that could start fires. You should also remove any boxes and inflammable material near the outside of the house. If you have a garden syringe or a stirrup pump, this should be kept close to your fallout room. Fires can be put out quite easily if tackled at once, while they're still small. But they spread rapidly and can soon get out of control. Keep buckets of water on each floor of your house. Remember, fires can be extinguished just as well with dirty water as with your valuable drinking water. To minimize the danger from flying glass, you should draw your curtains and lower your blinds. After an attack, it may be necessary to move you and your family to a safer area. To provide for this emergency, you should have a suitcase ready packed. You should include a change of clothes, personal valuables, eating and drinking utensils, and the blanket. Take an overcoat or Macintosh in case of rain. You must remember you will only be able to take what you and your family can carry. Finally, a point for all car owners. Always keep your car topped up with petrol so that if you are instructed to move to a safer area, you will be ready to leave at any time. But, until you are told, you will not know where it is safe to go. These are all necessary precautions as there will be no time for preparation once an attack starts. By taking these steps, you can increase the safety of your home and of your family. I'm going to explain to you the system of warning signals that will be used in this country in the event of a nuclear attack and on which you should be prepared to act. An exact knowledge of the signals and what to do when you hear them could save your life. There are four warnings. The red, the grey, the black, and the all clear. First, the red one. This siren is sounding the red warning. It means that there is imminent danger of an attack. This is the grey warning. It means that fallout is expected in an hour's time. Where sirens have not yet been provided, the grey warning may also be given by church bells. Or in Scotland, where church bells are not in common use, by word of mouth or by whistle. These are maroons. They indicate the black warning. It means there is imminent danger of fallout in your area. Where maroons have not yet been provided, this warning might be given by a gong or whistle sounding one long and two short notes, which is the Morse note, D. Finally, this is the all clear. It means that there is no further threat of air attack or fallout and that you can leave your place of shelter. The all clear may also be given by civil defense workers or the police. Now, what to do? when you hear the signals. First and most important, you should take cover immediately if you hear this red warning. If you are outdoors and cannot get home in four or five minutes, 
take cover in the nearest building. If you are caught in the open, take any available shelter. But if there is no obvious cover, you should lie in a ditch or a depression in the ground, covering the exposed skin of your face and hands to protect them from the heat flash. Here is an emergency announcement. An air attack is approaching this country now. Go to shelter or take cover at once. If you are driving a car, park immediately. But do not leave your car in any place where it might obstruct the many vehicles that will be engaged on urgent rescue work. Park it off the road if possible. Find the nearest cover, and if there are no buildings, lie flat in a ditch or depression. You should always give shelter to anyone who is caught in the open near your house when the warning sounds. They may have no other protection from the attack. An air attack is approaching this country now. If you are visiting, take cover wherever you are, unless you can get home in four or five minutes. If you are at home, you should turn off the gas and oil supplies and disconnect your electric heaters. Damp down any fires with earth or sand and close all your windows. Then take cover in your fallout room or shelter. Now a grey warning, with fallout expected in an hour's time. If you had only taken temporary cover, you should go home, if you can get there quickly. If, however, you are still in the open, look for safer and more comfortable shelter as quickly as possible. If you are visiting and have taken shelter, go home if you can get there quickly. But if you can't, stay where you are. If you are at home, finish any last minute preparations and then go to your fallout room. Finally, a black warning, which means fallout is imminent. If you are still outside, find the best available cover. If you are visiting, take shelter where you are. At home, Go at once to the fallout room when the black warning is heard. Remain there. Keep the door of the room shut as there will be plenty of ventilation from around the door. Everyone must realize there is the possibility of an attack taking place before any warning can be given. If this happened, the first indication would be the flash of heat and light produced by the explosion and lasting up to 20 seconds. This would be followed by the blast wave. Whatever happens, you must not look in the direction of the flash. It could blind you. If you are caught in the open by the attack, fling yourself on the ground instantly, wherever you are. Do not move until the blast wave has passed. If you are at home or visiting, move instantly away from open windows or doors and take cover behind the nearest solid protection. When the heat flash passes, go to your fallout room if you can reach it in a matter of seconds before the blast arrives. If you can't, you should stay where you are until the blast wave has passed. It is unlikely that an attack will come without any warning and the warning system is aimed to give notice of the threat of attack and of fallout so that you have time to take cover. Instant recognition of the warning signals is vitally important. So let's recap. The red warning. Imminent danger of attack. The grey warning. Fallout expected in an hour. The black warning. Danger of fallout imminent. The all clear. No further danger of attack or fallout. Warnings will only be cancelled by the all clear.
or by word of mouth from the police or civil defence wardens. Once a warning has been given, there is danger, and you must not expose yourself needlessly. From now on, you must listen for and take immediate notice of warning signals. For your own safety, you must follow exactly and promptly any instructions given by civil defence workers or the police. The warning system can save your life. You must not only know what to do in the event of a nuclear attack, you must also know what action to take immediately afterwards. Your safety may depend on prompt action taken during the short time that may elapse before fallout arrives. As soon as the heat and blast waves have passed, one of you should leave your fallout room and find out the extent to which the house has been damaged. Fire will be the most immediate danger. You should go round the house and put out any fires that the heat may have started before they have a chance to become established. Call your family to help you if necessary. Fires can be extinguished by using mains water if still available. You must turn off the stopcock as soon as possible so as to prevent the possibility of contaminated water entering the system. You must at the same time turn off any water heaters and shut down your boiler. To prevent valuable clean water from being used for flushing, you should tie up the ball cock in your WC cistern. From now on, Conserve your water supply. Having dealt with the inside of your house, you should now put on gumboots or stout shoes, a coat done up to the neck, a hat or headscarf, and some gloves, before going to see what needs to be done outside. This must be done, regardless of the unknown risk of fallout. Make sure your house is safe from any fires which may have started nearby or fires which may spread from other houses. When you have dealt with your own home, be ready to give assistance to your neighbours if they need help. But whatever you are doing, listen for the warning signals of approaching fallout. If you have been in the open after an attack, when you get indoors, take off your outer clothing and leave it outside the fallout room. Have a wash if possible. By these precautions you will get rid of any fallout that may have settled on you. Once this has been done, go to your fallout room and stay there. It is vital that you should know what to do immediately after a nuclear attack. On your action, may depend the safety of your home, your family, your neighbour and yourself. Any delay on your part may endanger the lives of everyone living around you. Once the black warning has sounded, it means your home is in a fallout area and you must remain in your fallout room. Remember, you may have to remain under cover for at least a week. So now a general guide to the days you will have to spend in your fallout room. Stay in your refuge rooms. During this period, listen for announcements and instructions on your radio. It will be all right for you to leave the fallout room to collect more food or water or to go to the lavatory but time spent outside your fallout room should be kept to the absolute minimum. Except for these reasons, you should never go outside the fallout room. Fallout dust cannot usually be seen. Only the wardens and the police with their special instruments will know the level of fallout radiation. The amount of fallout will vary from place to place. 
it will be heaviest in the middle of the fallout area and grow less and less towards the edge of the plume. Where fallout is particularly heavy, people may have to be moved to a safer area. If this does become necessary, you will be told by radio or by the wardens or the police. Keep your suitcase to hand and be ready to move, but on no account leave home before you are told. If you have to be moved, put on some warm clothes and take with you enough food to last for 24 hours. This food should be packed in airtight containers. Private car owners will be asked and expected to fill every available seat. As few people as possible will be moved. And for most of you, it will be stay in your fallout rooms. Use your food and water carefully and always remember the danger of radiation. For your own safety, you should wear plastic or rubber gloves. Keep all your food covered. If the cover is unbroken, then the food will be safe. Before you open the food, wipe the packing carefully. This will prevent any fallout dust that has settled on the package from getting into the food. When you have unwrapped the food, you should immediately dispose of the wrapping in the dustbin. Your water must also be kept covered. Do not use any mains water for cooking or drinking until you have been told that it is safe. In the meantime, use your water sparingly and reuse the water for different purposes. Always remember, boiling contaminated water will not make it safe for drinking. Everywhere, the dangers from fallout will decrease as time passes. When the danger from fallout has lessened sufficiently, the civil defense or the police will tell you when you can go outside. Do not go out until you are told it is safe. And even then, you may only be able to go out for a very short time. Essential work will be restarted as soon as possible. Emergency arrangements may be made for the distribution of water. You will be told when it is safe to stay out for longer periods, but there will still be danger from fallout and nobody should remain outside for longer than necessary. You must still be careful not to bring fallout into the house from outside. Wear some stout boots or shoes to go out and change before returning indoors. Wash the boots thoroughly when you get back. Wipe down all the working surfaces in your kitchen, your larder, and also anything that may come into contact with food. You should wear plastic or rubber gloves, and when you have finished, you should wash the gloves. Burn all your rubbish. Although the fire will not get rid of radioactivity, it will reduce the bulk of your rubbish and help to prevent the spread of ordinary disease. If the present world situation does lead to a nuclear attack on this country, it is vital that you shall have taken the necessary measures to safeguard your home as much as possible. It is vital that you should know what action to take in the event of a nuclear attack. If you fail in this, your negligence could endanger the lives of your friends and neighbors as well as your own family. Remember that the civil defense wardens and the police are here to aid and advise you, but wherever you live, you must know how to help yourselves and be prepared to help others if their lives are endangered. <laughs>